Hello and welcome to Loving Tech Life where I make videos about tech and gaming. In this video I'm going to take you through my minimalist gaming and entertainment setup. The goal of this setup is to strike a balance between top audiovisual performance with a minimalist family friendly functionality and style. I've put the timestamps and links to everything below so you can check it out. I hope you enjoy the tour but if I miss anything please drop your questions below and I'll get back to you. With that said let's check it out. There is probably more technology packed in here than it first appears. And as I mentioned before, I had to strike a balance in getting the best performance and audiovisual experience, but also make it super user-friendly and convenient for my family or visitors to use. I also had to keep it visually minimal and consider the wife-friendly factor. After all, this is a family living area, not a gamer's bedroom or a man cave. I had to make sure that everything integrated really well with features that supported and complemented each other. More on this later. Firstly, let's talk about the TV. This is a 65 inch LG CX or C10 OLED TV, which was released the same year as the Xbox Series X and PS5 consoles and was the first line of LG OLED TVs to support HDMI 2.1. Since then, the C1 and C2 versions were released, but I still recommend the CX if you can pick one up at a discount second hand. These LG OLED TVs have simply awesome picture quality which really blows you away when playing games, watching movies and TV series, particularly those that take full advantage of 4K Dolby Vision HDR support, which you'll find with Ultra HD 4K Blu-rays, Xbox Series X games or with the majority of the major streaming services. The main reason I purchased this model at the time aside from the awesome picture was the gaming features with HDMI 2.1 for the Xbox Series X and PS5 consoles that support 4K at 120Hz and VRR. The TV is sitting on an entertainment unit that we've had for years which I think might have been from Ikea. It helps hide all the wires and has enough storage for various bits and pieces. Under the TV, I have an Ikea shelf, which is a bit of a hack, that's purely there to raise the bottom of the TV panel above the soundbar, as these TVs sit very low and without it, a soundbar would block a portion of the bottom of the screen. You may also have noticed the backlight behind the TV. This is not part of the TV, but it is a separate RGB light strip called the LifeX Z strip. Here I use the adhesive that comes with the strips to neatly stick them to the back. Now these are not designed specifically for TVs so you have to be very careful when bending them around corners or they will break. I love these because they are versatile clever strips that output a really bright colorful light. I also have one behind my desk monitor that you see in my other videos where it lights up the whole background. They can be controlled with an app I also have them connected to Siri and Alexa voice assistants so my family can turn them on and off easily. They are usually off during the day and are scheduled to come on at full brightness in the afternoon and are set to dim again later in the evening. One really cool feature is that you can sync the lights with some music and have a mini disco in the living room for the kids. Also behind the TV is an old 640 gig USB hard drive I had lying around which is just used to add storage to the TV to be able to pause live TV and record the odd TV show. We also have this massive rock salt lamp for lighting and visually provides a bit of a counterbalance for the Xbox on the other side and is almost the same size and shape. It's connected to a Miros power adapter so I can schedule it to come on at the same time as the LifeX Z strip and can switch it off remotely at the same time too. In front of the rock lamp is an obsidian rock, which my wife assures me is there to protect the house. Now moving on to what I have connected to the TV. On the left hand side, I have the Xbox Series X for gaming. It's actually the only gaming console I usually have connected to this setup. This is to keep the clutter down to a minimum. I have a PS5, but it's so massive, I can't really hide it in this setup. That sits on my desk with my PC, and this also means that if the TV is busy, I can game up there instead. The Xbox integrates really well with this setup and is taking full advantage of the TV capabilities as well as the sound capabilities of the Sonos soundbar. More on this later. Hiding stealthily in this shelf is a Sony Ultra HD Blu-ray player. I believe the model number is the UBP-X700. 
I have a small collection of UHD Blu-rays. Streaming is perfectly serviceable, but for some movies, I wanted the best quality picture and sound to make the most out of the TV and speakers. For this, an uncompressed Ultra HD Blu-ray can't be beat. The sound is certainly where you'll notice the biggest difference, but the visuals can be cleaner too. I got a separate player because although the Xbox will play Ultra HD Blu-rays and it supports the premium HDR Dolby Vision standard via streaming apps or games, its Blu-ray drive does not support it, hence the separate player. Some people might say that 50% of video is audio and I would agree. This is why I opted for the Sonos Arc soundbar. It's definitely not the cheapest soundbar option out there, but for me, it was the best for this setup. Before getting the Arc, I had an old 5.1 speaker setup that was a bit unsightly, and it wasn't convenient having rear speakers on stands behind the couch. Having this soundbar keeps things super tidy and minimal and fits the white friendly factor. I chose a white color as opposed to the black to have it blend in a bit more with the setup, and it's a good size for sitting under the 65 inch TV. It's not all about looks though, as the Arc sounds fantastic and has so many cool features. One of my favorite is the speech enhancement toggle, which makes all the dialogue so much louder and clearer compared to the rest of the background sound and music, which can sometimes be so loud in comparison to the dialogue. It definitely cuts down on the need to constantly increase volume to hear the dialogue, then quickly turn down the volume during the really loud bits while watching TV at night. This soundbar integrates really well with the C10 as they both support eARC HDMI, which means the speaker works seamlessly like it's part of the TV. It turns on and off with the TV and the volume is controlled with the TV remote. Having a single TV remote for the TV and separate sound system makes things super simple for the family. eARC also means it can handle higher quality Dolby Atmos signals from TVs that can output them and it also passes through from the Xbox and Blu-ray player. Most of the mainstream streaming apps around now support Dolby Atmos. You will need to check your expectations though with regards to the Atmos surround effect from a single soundbar. Despite what the marketing might have you believe, you're not going to hear things coming from behind you. In future, I have the option of expanding this setup with rear speakers and a sub, but for now, this unit kicks out more than enough sound for this space. Since the Sonos Arc is also a smart speaker, it works independently from the TV and can be controlled from an app to stream music from your favorite streaming services like Spotify and Apple Music and syncs up with other Sonos speakers like the Sonos Room I have in the kitchen. Using Apple AirPlay 2, I can have the same music playing from the Arc, my Sonos Roam, and the HomePod Mini on my desk. I've even set up the Amazon Alexa voice assistant so my family can choose the music they want to play and can control the TV backlight and salt rock light with voice commands. Lastly, in one of the drawers, I have all the Xbox accessories three controllers in all, an original Series X controller which I've mainly set up for my daughter, having the colored buttons on the controller matching what's on the screen helps her out, there's a Project Scorpio Edition controller for visitors, and my Elite Series 1 controller. I've had this for years and love the weight of it in my hands and find it hard to go back to other lighter controllers. I haven't picked up an Elite Series 2 yet as I've been expecting Microsoft would release an Elite 3 before long and recent news suggests it's probably not far off. Wedged into the drawer is a controller charger that can keep up the two topped up at a time. The battery packs on the controllers are swapped out for charger compatible battery packs. Lastly, I have a Plantronics Rig 800 headset since the end of 2019. I've had many Xbox headsets over the years and must say this is by far the most comfortable. The audio sounds great and also supports Dolby Atmos and the mic sounds really good to the others in party chat. My friends also appreciate the mic position because it's naturally just out of the path of my nose breathing. Previous mics used to make it sound like we had a heavy breathing serial killer in party chat. This same exact headset has been re-released with a charging dock, making charging a little bit more convenient, but it's an unnecessary upgrade for me as the headset is identical and at the moment the headset is kept in the drawer and I can charge from there. Well, what's next for this setup? We do plan on wall mounting the TV at some stage when we renovate the downstairs area 
and we'll need to run some cabling behind the wall to keep it neat. I've held off in getting a Nintendo Switch since my daughter was a bit too young to play it, but I think I could accommodate one quite easily in this setup. Well, that was my minimalist gaming entertainment setup tour. Overall, I'm really happy with it, and I think it balances my needs as well as my family's. Okay, so you made it to the end of this ridiculously long video, and thank you for watching. Now, if you drop a comment below with minimalist loving tech life, I'll give you a like and a comment as I know you're still here. Check out this video you might be interested in watching next, and I'll see you in the next one.